How many times have you brought your car in for a front end alignment and weren't entirely sure what was going on? Your car came out probably driving straighter and you were told it was going to wear the tires less, but in the middle there was kind of a black box. So let's sort that out by introducing you to the big three of alignment, camber, caster, and toe. To help us, I've enlisted the guy whose shop has done dozens of alignments on my cars, Ron Vasconcelos of Dependable Tire and Brake in San Rafael, California. All right, Ron, first of all, tell us what is toe. That's what people mostly think of when their tires are out of alignment. Toe in, toe out, pigeon toe, duck toe. Yep. Okay. Okay. Toe in is going to wear the tires on the outside edge. Yeah. Toe out is going to wear the tires on the inside edge. So when your tires are kind of towed in, pigeon toed, toed in. the outsides wear out more. Correct. Because they're kind of scrubbing as you drive. Exactly. But why do you tow wheels in or out at all? Well, you pretty much tow in because you have friction as a car rolls down the road. Friction yeah. is pulling them apart. Okay. As, a, as all the bushings move and all that kind of stuff, if it's towed in, you tow it in just a little bit, and it tows out to huh. about zero. Oh, interesting. Everything gets pulled back by all the motion. Everything gets pulled back by the, somewhat by the motion. Obviously, some suspension systems are tighter than others. Old front-wheel drive cars, they used to tow them out because the wheels would pull them in. Oh, from the torque. From the torque pulling it in. So if you're towed out or if you're not towed correctly, you're going to have less forward stability? You're going to have, if you have toe out, the car wants to turn. It wants to dart. It wants to dart, right. So if you're going down the freeway and the car wanders, it's wandering a bit, yeah. it might have some toe out. Okay. So let's now go to camber. This is one that people often misunderstand. What is negative and what is positive camber? Negative camber, the tire is leaning in at the top. So it's squatting a little. Typically, if you look at an old Volkswagen, the rear wheels right. have negative camber. A lot of it. Right? Yeah. Porsches these days have a lot of negative camber. So if you have a lot of negative camber, you're getting what benefit? You're getting cornering benefit. It's going to handle better. So when I dive into that corner, that thing's going to plant. The tire's going to plant. Instead of if it's leaning over positive, it's going to want to roll the other way. So yeah. you're kind of presetting it for the dig that's going to get into the road. And also, if you're not driving the car hard, you're just driving it back and forth down the freeway, well, the tire's already sitting that way, it's going to wear on the inside edge. Okay, so it's a waste of performance if you really have an extreme negative camber. Correct. Okay. So then the one that's trickiest of the of the big three is caster. I still struggle with this one a little bit. How do you describe caster to someone? Caster is the angle between the upper ball joint and the lower ball joint. With the lower ball joint leading, that would be positive caster. This is the front of the car. Yep. The lower ball joint or the lower pivot. Of the steering. Of the steering. Okay. Forward is positive caster. So that's like a bicycle fork. Correct. And that Correct. is for what purpose? Why isn't that straight up and yeah. down? Stability. A straight up and down caster angle would make for a wheel that nervously tracks left or right at almost any whim or input. A little positive caster or lean back in the angle the wheel pivots along calms this down. A car will pull towards low caster. Say you have four degrees on the right side and three degrees on the left side, the car is going to want to drift to the left because think about it, the ball joint is going backwards, it wants to go that way. And all this stuff interacts. Car pulls towards negative caster, pulls towards positive camber. So you can have one one way and one the other, and the car will drive straight. <laughs> but they're both off. <laughs> they're both off, right. correct. Now, of these three, why do they go wrong? I mean, these are all big metal parts in here, and people would look at it and say, how could that ever budge? Well, a lot of parts these days are made of aluminum. Yeah. Aluminum soft. They do light aluminum because it's lighter weight. Aluminum is stronger per pound than steel, but... But easier to bend. Couple that with low profile tires to transmit more road impact to those aluminum parts and the fact that the joints and mounts that hold your suspension in place wear and then allow things to drift and that's why you need an occasional realignment. So when someone hits a pothole, should they be concerned and if so, why? A um, number of different things. You can bend a wheel, you can bend suspension parts, you can break the bead in a tire. You see a lot of people with bulge on the side of it. What's happened is they've hit something so hard that it's broken the belts in there. If I've hit something and I'm not sure if it did any damage, are there any telltale things I can look or feel for? Um, the steering wheel was straight before when I was going straight. Now the steering wheel's off. While you're going straight. While you're going straight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> something got bent, right? Dead giveaway. Shake. Now I hit that pothole. Now my car shakes as I'm doing 60 miles an hour down the freeway. Possibly bent a wheel, something like that. Many of us only get our cars aligned when we get new tires. But notice things like pull or vibration as you drive, a sign that things aren't aligned anymore, and potentially costing you some tire life, handling quality, maybe even a little fuel economy. 
or CarTech Demystified right now at CNETOnCars.com. Click on CarTech 101. 